Hi everybody, happy Thursday, it's 3.30, that means it's science time. If you want to join us to do some static electricity science today, you're going to need a few items. If you don't have them already in front of you, go grab them now. You are going to need a pencil, preferably one that has a sharp nib. A plastic ruler. If you don't have a plastic ruler, don't panic. Try and find a pen that's got some see-through plastic or a pencil. So a Bic Biro, this is a Bic mechanical pencil, something plastic like that. You're going to need a pair of scissors. Blue tack or plasticine, not very much, just enough to hold your pencil. And some scrap paper. So if you don't have those things, go grab them now. Before we get started today, we're going to be talking about electricity. So electricity, you probably know what that is. You've probably found it in your plugs. You've probably plugged electronic things in. But the type of electricity we're talking about today is static electricity. Have you ever in the winter got a shock from a car door or maybe a door handle? Well, that shock or that zap is the cause because of static electricity. And we're going to actually use that to our advantage today to make what I think looks like a magic trick, but actually it's a science trick. So let's talk a little bit about static electricity. Oh, Sophie and Xavier are so excited. I'm so excited too. So static electricity is a type of electricity where we build up a charge on a material. So let's have a little think about what that looks like. Everything is made up of atoms and inside atoms are protons and neutrons and then around the outside are electrons. Hi Electra! And so protons are positively charged and electrons are negatively charged and one proton and one electron cancel each other out to give us a neutral charge. Everything likes to be neutral. Things don't like to be charged. But we're going to make something charged today which is how we're going to build our superpower. So let me show you how this works with a different experiment. If you have our kitchen science cookbook, you may have done this one. This is called Dancing Ghosts. All I have here is a tissue, and onto that tissue, I'm going to draw a shape of a key. Hey, JP, Christian, and Davis. Thank you. I love you guys too. All right, I'm just going to cut out this shape from some tissue. Do, do, do. Ho Hippa and Heidi. Hi, nice to see you logging on. So this is just a standard tissue. I'm just cutting out a shape here. And then you may have noticed that tissues say ply, two ply or four ply. So that's how many layers are. So I'm going to take off one of the layers of this tissue. Hey Mila! And I'm going to put this shape on the table and I am going to tape it down. Now, next what we're going to do is take a balloon, I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to tie it. And if a, oh Alex, I'm so glad you're excited. I'm going to show you this experiment first. If I take this balloon and put it close to the tissue, you can see that nothing really happens. So we're going to add a static charge to this balloon. And you know how we're going to do that? We're going to rub it on our head. Welcome, Matilda. Nice to see you. I'm going to rub it on my hair. That's going to make my hair stand up. Hey, Riley. Hey, Mason. And that's going to hopefully charge it. And if I hold it close to my tissue, do, 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 do. nothing happened. Try that again. I might have made my tissue too big. So we'll see. Nothing happens. What is wrong with my tissue? Obviously, my hair is not staticky enough. I try it one more time. Seth, Holly, and Mia from Blockhouse Bay. I'm so glad you bought my cookbook. You can do this experiment in there. You can see my experiment is not working very well. I think it's because my tissue is too big and because it's quite humid in this room today. So I'm going to adjust it by making my tissue a little bit smaller and we'll see how that goes. And if it doesn't work, that's cool. That's science and my hair might be too greasy. Zara and Eva, nice to have you with us. We're going to make my hair really messy today. Okay, let's have a look. Nothing. Well, my balloon is faulty. Try this at home. Hopefully it works if you've got better hair than me. Also, this tends to work better if your hair, oh, it is starting to work, if your hair actually um, is finer. My hair is quite thick. Okay, you should be able to see. Can you see that the tissue is coming up 
close to the balloon. It's not doing it very well. So I'm going to show you a different experiment. Do you have all of your ingredients with you? Okay, let's try this again. Oh, Eva, I'm so glad you love doing science. Here we go. We're going to try this again with a different experiment and we're going to try it on my hair and hopefully it's going to work a little bit better. So you are going to cut out a rectangle that's about 12 centimeters by three centimeters if you have the ability to measure. So you've got your ruler. We're going to measure out 12 centimeters by three centimeters. It doesn't have to be exact. So don't worry, you're just trying to make a rectangle that's about two, let's have a look at this. If we were gonna guess this, this is about two fingers wide and one, maybe one and a half fingers long. So don't worry if you can't measure it exactly, two fingers wide by one and a half fingers long. You're gonna cut that out. Don't worry if it's not exact, it doesn't have to be. All right, so now I have a rectangle. You're gonna take your rectangle when you've cut it out, you're gonna fold it in half lengthways and make a crease and then unfold it. And then you're gonna fold it in half the other way. And then you're gonna unfold it. So you should have a cross shape here that goes across the middle. Now you wanna squeeze it together so that the middle bit has a bit of a hump in the system. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a wrinkle there. Next, you're gonna take your blue tack or your plasticine, you're gonna put it on your surface and then put your pencil in there. I'll move so you can see my lab coat. Hey, Maya and Hannah, thanks. I'm excited about this one. Now be really careful because you have a sharp pencil here and you don't want to stab yourself. So just watch out that you don't fall and trip and touch that. Okay, so you've got now your rectangle. What I want you to do is balance it. So the nib of your pencil balances the middle section like that of your paper. So that's very simple. If it moves too far one way or the other, it's because it's not quite in the middle. So you can just shuffle it left or right. Hi, dear. All right, here we go. So mine is nicely balanced. And you can see, if I move out of the way so my lab coat is in the way, it's not doing very much. It's not very exciting. What we're going to do, hey, May and Ruby, is we are going to apply a static charge to the ruler. So take your plastic ruler. You don't have your plastic ruler. Take a plastic encased pen or pencil and rub it on your hair like this as fast as you can. And what you're doing is building up a charge because both the paper, hey Ellie and Luca, both the paper and the ruler are insulators, which means that they don't conduct electricity very well, which means that we can keep a charge on here. Okay, so on my hair. Now, let's have a look what happens when I bring this ruler. Oh, Emma, I'm so glad you love science. If I bring this ruler close to my floating rectangle, are you ready? Let's take a look. Can you see it move? Did you see it move? I didn't touch it. All I did was bring the ruler close to it. Try this with your one. You should be able to, using the power of the charge you created, Get this piece of paper to rotate as if by magic. Hi, Gabrielle. As if by magic using the power of static electricity. So you've created a charge on your ruler. Hey, Ruby and Pippa. And look, you can spin it without touching it because the opposite charges are actually trying Oh, the same charges are trying to repel each other. So repel means try and move away from each other. So I've built up a charge by rubbing it on my head. It's a negative charge. And the negative charge that is naturally in the paper is going, no, get away from me. And it's doing that so well that actually it's able to move this whole sheet of paper just from the charge. Wow, that's what I think too. So try this at home. And you might want to try seeing how big or long a piece of paper you can do this with. But I think this is cool. Hey, Alec and Chase. 
And so you can actually move things without touching them, just using your hair, a ruler, and a bit of paper. It's cool, hey, thanks, Rebecca. I love this experiment, and I think it's a bit like having your own secret magic trick. Oh, Electra, I'm so glad yours moved. Now, if yours isn't moving, don't worry. Try changing the piece of paper so it's a little bit smaller. Maybe change your ruler or see if you've got something else that is plastic, but this should work pretty well. And you can see how fast you can spin it. Look, mine's going pretty fast now. Why does it do that, asked Jesse. Well, it does it because we create a charge. So, we talked about how things can be positive or negatively charged. Everything likes to be neutral. You may have heard the expression that opposites attract. Well, opposites do attract, including opposite charges. But like charges repel or move away from each other. So what happened is, as we create a charge by rubbing it on our hair, my hair is actually giving up some of its electrons, which are now sitting on the ruler. That makes my ruler negatively charged. My paper has both a positive and negative charge, so when I hold my ruler close to it, the negative charge of my ruler and the negative charge of the paper want to repel each other or move away from each other, and they can do that with enough force that it moves the whole piece of paper. And there you go. I think that's a cool trick. You can pretend it's a magic trick, but you actually know that it's really a science trick. And that's all about static electricity. So I think that's pretty cool. If you've got a magic wand, hi Grace, you might want to have an abracadabra or something before you show this so people think that it looks like magic. But there you go. That's our static electricity. Hey Kip, static electricity for today. Try this at home, see how you're doing. Thanks, Ethan, I think it's a cool experiment too. Tomorrow we have a whole new experiment for you. We will be back, hi Zach, at 3.30 tomorrow. And don't forget to check what ingredients that you will need to do our next experiment. Oh, Andrew says, I love your show and cookbook and a plastic pen worked easier for me. That's good to know, I'll try it with my plastic pencil. Let me see, oh now it's stuck in my hair. I'm having so much fun too. Thanks, Eva, Lucia. Uh, my pencil's working a little bit, but I think my ruler has a big surface area. Who was that just then? Was that Max that said hi? Zach is impressed. Try other materials. You want things that are insulator, so you don't want things to have metal in it. Plastics are going to work um, the best. But try it. Look at how fluffy my hair is now. Let's see how messy you can make your hair go. And then if you get tired of doing your hair, hi Ruby and Pippa, go find your mum and dad and rub it on their hair too. Sophie and Xavier, I'm excited. I will see you tomorrow too. Have fun everybody and we'll see you soon. Don't forget, post your videos on our chat in our Facebook so that we can see your spinner as well. See you soon, bye.